Cyberbrainer is an online training platform designed to help individuals and teens learn the latest technologies and become certified professionals producing a comprehensive learning experience. The precisely they are going to precisely control the data that is going to be, or it is going to be, extracted or it is going to be put in the workday system. Whereas the actions which are there, which is like initiating a business process, is driven by the same BP security policy, but only differences. Instead of initiating action, create position only. It is going to be like create position with Embrace's web service, because this is definitely going to be an A. P. I call which is going to be initiated. Clear on this, so only those folks who have the access for the create position, BEP space action will be able to run an EIB. The rest of the folks will not be able to run an EIB. Clear on this funder any questions you have seen. This is clear at a high level overview. Is this clear in terms of what is the security? That all right, perfect. Like I said for any outbound EIBs, there are like three steps. One is your get data. So we have seen the permissions that is going to come from your domain security policies for the field level. And for you to initiate the EIB that is going to come from your business process web service. Initiating action stage. That is where it is coming from. Clear on this, clear on the purpose and where the data and also the security, everything is coming in, because that is something which you might be prompted in your interviews as well. So where is the permission coming for EIBs? One is going to be your get input data in your domain security policies, and the next one is going to be in your business process web service initiating action. Right, that is number one. Next, when do you want to consider EIB as a right tool? So one is like, can I have a transformation done? So this is more for an outbound EIB. So for an outbound EIB, when should I consider this as a right tool? So, which is like I want to have one stop all of my outbound interfaces, and I want to transform the data, and also share this across with my third-party vendor, including transformation, including transformation, if I can do within a single step, I might use an outbound EIB. That is number one. Second, if I want to have any kind of a transformation, typically. So if I want to have some transformation of my data, the other purpose is like the entire transformation of my data can be managed in a single shot. So, which means a transformation of a data, which means like, see, I am going to extract a handy to send across a data to my payroll vendor. So I need to send the data. I need to first extract the payroll information. Say I need to send the data across to an ADP payroll vendor. So what I would rather do is I would first extract the data from my Workday system, make some transformations. Transformations is like whatever data I have got. Should I clean up the data, ensure that I do not send any kind of personal information? So what I might do is I might send only the employed information old vendor and apart from that, I might also do some other transformations as well, some basic level checks calculations, checks, and balances, and whatever I want to do, I will do it. All of this. I can do it in my external EIB load, all right. And again security setups. We will see that up. All right, that is number one. Second, as far as your security for your integration or your outbound integration is concerned, I do not want to go more into detail in the technical stuff for now since we are going to be dealing more about the inbound integrations. Remember, only a couple of things over here in this. So when I see the demo and I show you the demo, you will understand it a little bit better. But what I would rather say, 
we have to have first the permission to the appropriate domains. So the domains need to have the access. Like I said, put get access, and obviously you are going to have the view permissions as well. That is number one that you need to have. Ignore the second part for the island, the ISU2, EIBs and the report, because this is more for the outbound integrations where you can transform the data and everything. But I do not want to deep dive into it for now. I am just going to be only teaching you inbound, because outbound is very, very technical, and I do not want to get to that because there is some studio integrations, so much of stuff. So we will concentrate on inbound only for now which means you need to only remember, you need to have the get access to the data. That is number one. And the second thing that you need to have is your web service initiating action for that particular, a particular business process and you are good with it. All right, that is the only thing that you need to have as far as an inbound EIB is concerned. And outbound EIBs are going to be more used for exacting information from the Workday system. Or you want to attach it back to the tenant for further use references, or if you want to transform it, say for example, I am going to get the data, transform it in some manner or the other. For example, I might get the raw payroll data, send it across to my payroll vendor, and post the payroll calculations. The payroll calculations is going to be like, I am going to get only the CTC information from my Workday system. Then I am going to send it across to my payroll vendor, be it a Saturday year or an ADP or any vendor, for example. Then get the data back as your earnings deductions, tax deductions, etc. And then push it back into my Workday system. So this is a typical example, an end to an example, for an EIB. Alright, let us more go into the inbound EIB, because that is one board I want to focus about, not the external or the outbound EIBs. So inbound EIBs. What I am going to be possibly doing is first, from my external system, I am going to get the data. And if I want to transform it, since the UI, in this case, is going to be, is going to be, a Excel, I can easily do my transformation the way I want to do it. Next, I am going to load it or deliver it into my. We can have other formats as well, but the common one is Excel. We will see that next as well, when we go into the short demo. Alright, so all that? We let us go to that, and then, so simple thing. What we do is we create an EIB, and then we load the data, after transforming it or getting it from my third-party vendor, and then push it into my Workday system. Alright, so let us see an example that will make it a lot more clear to most of your questions that you have. In order to create an EIB, what I do is I go to the task. I say, create EIB. Create EIB. I am going to be using the create position task, so I am going to use, I am going to put it like Rian, which is always many a mean convention, I am going to say create inbound. So always mention whether it is an inbound or an EIB, inbound or an outbound EIB. So I would rather put it as create position, inbound EIB, create position as the EIB that I am going to use. I am going to say inbound EIB, and I am going to inbound over here, so I am not creating an outbound one. Outbound is to extract data from Workday, from Workday, and then push it to your third-party vendor. Inbound is to get data into the Workday system or put data into Workday. Now I am going to say OK. Next, it is going to open this particular green over here and in comments. If I want to say test EIB, I will say it is test EIB over here. I will go to next retrieval method. See, here it is like I can have multiple ways in which I can do it. I would choose attach file at launch, but in a real world any of these could be used. File transfer protocol, 
If I already have it configured and if my server has been white white listed and all that is done, I can use an FT, P, or I can use a Google Drive if I have the access to it, or a UR, L, or an SFTP, or any other file retrieval mechanism that I want to do. I can use any of them. I can use any of them, whatever I want to do. But now I am using attach file launch. All right, I can do it also. If you want to do it now, you can do it as well. I do not want to do it as restricted to something. If I want to restrict it to only some instances, I can do it over here. Next, data format, file type, I am choosing only a spreadsheet template over here. I do not want to choose custom spreadsheet, but I would prefer a web service spreadsheet template, which is similar to what we have web service operation here. Enter the business process name, which is create position. See your create position web service. Use this particular one. This is exactly the same that you gave in your business process initiating action. It is exactly the same that you have over here as well. So whatever permissions are secured over here, only those folks will be able to run this. And Please do like, share and subscribe to our channel.